Carl Oberman, welcome back to the China Current. In our first conversation, you spoke about your life in Texas and how you become an environmental photographer in China today. I read this beautiful essay that you wrote and illustrated with your picture of Sanjiangyuan in National Geographic. Sanjiangyuan, why is it so important? Well, it's, it's the source of the three rivers, right? So the Yellow and the Yangtze and the Mekong River all come from Sanjiangyuan, which provides water for not just the most of China, but also Southeast Asia, right? But also it's the habitat of snow leopards. So it's, and it's, and it's the first national park, right? It's China's model for the future of how we see national parks in China. Three times the size of Yellowstone. Massive. Massive. Ma I mean, really big and, you know, much, much higher, like, you know, 5,000 meters. So it's, it's pretty intense. What does it feel like being there? Just wild. I mean, it sounds simple to say wild, but I, it's an expanse. I mean, you can be sitting there so high up and just look and, and it's almost the clouds are touching the ground because you're so high up and there's as far as you can see, it's just it's just wild. Uh, there's no building, no human. You're actually also an explorer. You spent years, five years and counting, going into parts of China that hardly anyone gets a glimpse of, let alone a pretty good taste for. What have you explored and what have you learned? For me, I think I have most clearly learned the link between people and conservation. The fact that if you, you cannot do conservation, especially in China, without doing the people first. I, you cannot tell someone to conserve the land without solving the issue of their livelihood or their dinner or their children's jobs or school. So in China, especially while we talk about conservation and protecting these lands, most of the time it actually comes down to education and poverty relief. What does China have to do with conservation and protection of the environment because so many people associate it for its urban centers yeah. and the great pollution in cities like Beijing. Yeah, well China as a nation, again, the diversity of biomes and ecosystems is massive. It's more than the US, in fact. So when we talk about conserving species, even like the snow leopards, China is critical that we protect these species. But also I think it provides a model for developing nations around the world that have large populations living close to wildlife that are still developing. Now we're seeing China's experience being exported to other places around the world as well. China had the goal of eliminating poverty in 2020 and they just announced that they did it. And so part of that has been relieving poverty of these people living in the reserves. And how they do it is actually a lot of times, for example, Sanjiang and they have a, a one family, one ranger program where they hire one member per family to be a ranger for the national park. And so then they have a salary as a ranger and they're involved with monitoring the land for science and you know being tour guides or or watching for poaching, etc. Right? So they're finding ways to alleviate poverty by involving people in the national park. Through this life that you've built for yourself, does it tell you more about the planet or does it tell you more about humanity? I think it it shows me how you cannot disconnect people from nature and we must heal that. I think many times the people living in poverty in these villages are much closer to nature than a lot of us. Conservation and development is finding the balance where we can coexist and we can experience each other. People can go and experience nature on nature's terms. And I think that is critical for the soul and development of, of humanity. I am James Chow, you're watching The China Current. Follow us on social media at The China Current.